Hey everyone and welcome to today's Take Heart. We're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 where Paul says, In addition to all these things, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So how do we take up the shield of faith? Well, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 defines faith for us and it says, Now faith is a confidence, note that word confidence, in what we hope for and an assurance about what we do not see. In other words, faith is having a real deep confidence that God is who he's shown himself to be. He is who he says he is. And an assurance, again, I love that word assurance, it's this, I think, just this calmness, just this relaxedness that comes from just knowing he is going to do what he's promised he's going to do. And that's in the context of not seeing it yet and not being able to see it with our own eyes. It hasn't come to pass yet, some of these things. And yet I'm confident that God is who he said he is. And I'm assured that he'll do what he's promised he's going to do. That's what faith is. And the reason that's a shield for us, and Paul uses this image of like a, um, it's like a Roman kind of legionary. They walked basically behind these giant doors that they went into battle to protect their whole bodies. And faith is like that. When you're confident and assured that God is who he says he is and he's going to do what he's going to say he's going to do, then that protects our minds from, from double, kind of being double-minded, second-guessing ourselves all the time. It's like, no, I know what God said and I'm, I'm secure in that. I'm secure in who I am or I'm secure in what I'm meant to be doing with my life. It protects our hearts from discouragement. It protects our feet from stumbling and from hesitating. It protects our whole body, helps us to live well. And although this is an image, it's not a theoretical question for us to ask, how do I take up the shield of faith? Uh, have you ever had a day where you've just, in the day, just thought, I'm just totally at peace, totally assured, I can't think of another word, better word really, that, that God's with me and that his hand is on my life and that he's got things for me to do. When, when I have days like that, and I wish I had more than I do, I find myself living without the same level of stress and I find myself with a, with a greater level of boldness and so we all want to grow in that and particularly at the moment where it feels like probably we're getting flaming arrows coming at us left right and center we want to be taking up the shield so how do we take up the shield in a nutshell the key to it is is to recognize that it's not about faith in faith it's about faith in a person Really what we're talking about is we're talking about being confident in God's character and we're talking about being assured in, in who he is. And because we're assured in who he is, we expect certain things from him. So think about it like this. One of the people that I know best in the world is Mike. Mike and I have been to many, many restaurants over the years. And I can tell you when Mike and I go to a restaurant what he will order. Everything. And the waiter will look at us, you know, incredulously and they will go away and they will bring this ridiculous amount of food to the table. And then everyone will look very sceptically at us, the waiter, the other diners. Um, and uh, they'll think no human being can eat that. But I'm sitting there at the table and I'm full of assurance about things that I have not yet seen. I am uh, absolutely confident that this food is destined for destruction. Why? Because I know Mike. Because I have confidence in Mike because I understand Mike's character. I'll expect the food to disappear pretty quick. Now you might come up to me and say, wow, Andy, you've got such powerful expectations of Mike. How can I get an expectation level like you? And, and the risk is that you become obsessed over the expectation level. And what I would say is, hey, don't worry about your expectation level, just spend time with Mike. You know what, don't focus on your expectations. Focus on Mike. If you focus on Mike, the expectations take care of themselves. And in the same way, for years with faith, I used to think, I don't have enough faith. Does anyone else feel like that? I've, I've got such a tiny amount of faith. I'm a, I need more faith. And I obsess about faith like it was a petrol gauge that I could read and it was always flashing empty and I was trying to fill it up. And then one day I realized, oh my word, it's not, you know, if I just spend time with Jesus, the faith will take care of itself because I'll get to know him. I'll understand his ways. I'll understand how how true he is to his word how powerful he is to be able to fulfill it how loving he is to want to so if i spend time with jesus my faith level my confidence and assurance will will take care of itself and one of the things i've been reminding myself of recently 
is that an imperfect faith in God is always the result of an imperfect knowledge of him. In other words, if I wake up and I'm full of fear and doubt, a good question to ask myself is, what have I forgotten about you today, Lord? Or what am I missing about you today? If this is how low my expectations are of you, are of you could you remind me what I've missed about you? Really practically, a few things that we can do to spend time with Jesus. Uh, number one, and I know this is obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway, spend time in the word. I love this quotation from uh, D.L. Moody, who was an evangelist in the 1800s. He said, I prayed for faith and thought that someday faith would come down and strike me like lightning. But faith did not come. One day I read in the 10th chapter of Romans, now faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I had closed my Bible and prayed for faith. Now I opened up my Bible and began to study and faith has been growing ever since. And it's not about Bible study. It's about the fact that the Bible reveals to us what Jesus is like. It points us to him. So we can spend time with him by reading his word and by getting to know what he's like. Um, another thing that helps is spending time in his presence, whether that is just sitting and being and inviting the Holy Spirit just to sit and be with you and to hang with you, uh, or it's spending time in worship, but spending time in his presence, it does something I think that affects our souls um, in the same way that I can spend a whole evening sitting with a good friend and we don't say a word and I, I come away and I bet you my relationship with that person, well I know my relationship with that person has deepened and it's developed even though it hasn't involved many words. There's a place for just spending time in his presence. And the final thing I would say is do ordinary life with him. This isn't, faith isn't something, it's not a skill that we master, it's a relationship that we grow in. And that happens in the everyday and in the ordinary. And for all that I'm wishing, just like you are, these days away and that this season would end, nevertheless, at a time when the circumstances and the situation around us looks very, very bleak, um, this is an opportunity for us to say, look, Lord, I can't see all the things that I want to see right now. But nevertheless, I'm going to do today with you. Would we do it hand in hand? And as we do life together, day by day by day, we become reassured day after day after day that he is who he says he is and he'll do what he promised. Then faith grows one little bit at a time.